Hey, it's Dr. Snake here. Um, recently, um, I went over um, a, a Bronze Age burial mound, an ancient site. Um, they're known as uh, tumuli in the plural or tumulus in the singular. Um, and you'll find on Ordnance Survey maps, that's how they're marked, tumuli, tumulus. And this is one of the places where I do quite a lot of the workings, the ritual work. Um, but it's a, it's a really, you know, go there during the day. You know, it's it's atmospheric. You know, it's worth, you know, having a walk. It's a fairly long old walk to get there. But, um, yeah, so the it was an, a Sunday a few weeks ago, uh, despite being, you know, sort of still winterish. It was a uh, um, pretty warm day, so it was nice. So I went over there and... Um, through the trees, you know, you can just see this mound, which uh, is, you know, it's not it's not super big or anything like that. I'm sure it was in Bronze Age times, you see, because the area is uh, full of trees. And these these were, you know, more like pine trees. And these were actually planted going back to the 1920s. So before that it would have been large heathland you know large sprawling area and i think there's a number of uh, bronze age burial mounds in the vicinity um but this one in particular this would have been a lot bigger you know a lot more you know impressive long ago but you know due to rains and the general erosion you get you know it's it's just just a sort of small mound you know you can just just walk up it and stand on top of it but um yeah, so this is like, you know, because it's uh, uh, basically what I would see as a place of power, you know, it was once, a, a, you know, sacred site. Who honestly knows what they were used for by uh, presumably the ancient Britons? Um, but, you know, it's, uh, you know, archaeologists don't really know. Um, you know, some, you know, they call them burial mounds. Yeah, they may well have, you know, I believe they found you know, remains, skeletons, things like that. But, you know, they're not convinced, you know, to them, it's like, well, yeah, maybe they were, but they were used for something else. And, you know, clearly that would have been whatever the magical practices, magico religious practices of ancient Britons. Um, and so there's something about it. And, um, if you've got an interest in what people call ley lines, lays, I call them old straight tracks. You know, during the 70s, people said they were energy lines and things like that. Well, um, you know, that's kind of debunked, but who knows? But it's more, you know, I think the general idea now is that they, uh, these old lays, old straight tracks were, and they, they're across the world as well. But I'm talking about in Britain. So this particular place is uh, it just in Norfolk. It's up from Suffolk where I live. And there's a village called Croxton. And then you go a ways into the countryside from there and you find it. And it's near a, your nearest town is called Thetford. So you'd say that was South Norfolk. Um, so that's the location but these uh, old straight tracks, lines, they, they yeah, crisscrossed the country. And, and it's also the same across the world. And I think, you know, the general consensus now amongst researchers that have really got to it quite scientifically is that they were probably to do with shamanism, that it was the spirit paths of out-of-body experiences. And even if you're a bit sceptical and thought, no, it's more just a trance state, like a dreaming state. But still, they traversed the landscape, even if it wasn't, you know, sort of literally. Um, you know, so these, but, you know, who really knows with the nature of reality in the end? But basically, the thought is that these, these were the travelling paths for out-of-body experiences of sh shamans. Um, and, you know, ancient... Britain had shamans, you know, I mean, mean, you know, across the world. Um, so they're, they're kind of a place of, of power. I mean, there's no doubt. I mean, some places really do have a strong atmosphere. And this one is, you know, reasonably strong. Um, you know, it's, it's kind of one of those places most people wouldn't really notice um, unless they knew. So that's quite like it for that reason. 
But anyway, so the other Sunday, you know, I thought, well, I'll go over there. And as I say, you know, that's, you know, some of you may know that's one of the locations I use for the magical work. And so I was there and I thought, well, I'll kind of like, for want of a better term, channel the energy, you know, see if I could find something going on. Because archaeologists, well, they can really say Bronze Age burial mounds, you know, tumuli, they, they, not much else to say, really. Um, so anyway, yeah, so I did that. I was, I went up on the top of it and kind of channeled, you know, somehow sort of put my, went into a kind of trance and then kind of put my consciousness or tried to meld it with the location and the mound. And, you know, so doing, doing this for a little while. And then eventually I did start getting visionary stuff. And what, what I kind of saw, uh, it was in a trance state was, was this, rushing what I saw as serpent you know a large serpent flying through the trees and you know on these uh straight old straight tracks and um and then at some point you know it was, it was large and it just kind of whooshed right into me me standing on the mound and I felt this kind of sensation yeah of real energy the whole thing was going through me it was it was and there was quite a lot. It was almost like it was an information exchange, you know, because we talk, you know, I'm talking, uh, when I say information, obviously we're partly thinking of internet and, you know, the whole sort of data, that the whole world, it's an information economy. But in a way it always was, you know, because cause information has always been the key. And uh, so I felt... To me, it was I got this rush of information. It was very visionary. It was very fast. And you almost got these quick kind of visions of this ancient way of going on. And it's not something you could really, you know, put into words in a, in a very logical fashion. But, it, you know, information with information comes some form of knowledge. And, you know, it's a sort of unspoken knowledge. And, yeah, so so... So, yeah, it was a very powerful kind of experience, you know, which, which backs up the idea of old straight tracks and lays, ley lines, if you wish to call it that, spirit tracks. And, uh, you know, and, and so, yeah, it is a powerful place. And also, I must add that uh, when you read about old straight tracks and, you know, in some parts of the world, they're called serpent lines. So it's, it was a way of the serpent. And in... Britain, England and all over then, if you think back historically, Anglo-Saxon times, there was the worm and the worm was spelt W-Y-R-M, W-Y-R-M, worm. And that kind of was almost like a dragon or a large serpent. And so, you you know, it also in, in Northern Europe and, and Britain, there's this idea of serpents so these that inhabit the landscape and you know probably not literally although you know the legends have all sorts of stuff that sounds very literal but you know and, and so this uh whatever it was seemed to just just uh, distinctly remember it, this rushing force through to his great power and woof you know and it's almost oh you know it's right into me and and yeah and so so then you know when when that was all done i you know i kind of wondered it was a kind of the state of the mind state that i was in walking back a fair old ways to where i'd got my car parked yeah it was it was a very sort of profound feeling you know sun was shining it was very you know sort of a kind of oneness so it was it was very very you know it was interesting anyway and um you know this serpent force as i would see it um you know it's kind of one of the ancient mysteries i suppose but uh yeah the ancient world when, when you actually look back and these bronze age burial mounds in this vicinity going down to where i am in suffolk and towards london there's quite a lot of uh you know tumuli, tumuli uh mounds um and a little bit more towards London into Essex. There's, these, there's, there's some really quite impressive mounds that are still big. And it's thought that they were actually a bit more recent, sort of Romano-Celtic times. So, 
you know, you'd say around two, uh, around, well, more or less zero, bit before, bit after AD or common era, depending on what you prefer. Um, so, you know, about a couple of thousand years old. And whether they were built on a previous kind of, you know, really ancient site, it's difficult to say, but these are quite impressive. There's a little village there and uh, church go down path and you've got these, you know, you just don't expect it. Mounds and not much is made of it. You know, it's not like a touristy attraction, which Stonehenge, for example, is just massive tourist place. Um you know, it's just packed out. Um, you can't touch the stones anymore because of erosion and whatnot. But it's 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 like it's almost lost, you know, everything it had. And at one time it was highly atmospheric because I, I read a book. Uh, just oh, I forget what it was. But, but basically the guy, you know, he was older. He maybe wrote it in the 70s. But when he was young, he lived in Wiltshire near Stonehenge and he used to go and play where the stones were and it, there was not much ado made about Stonehenge. So, you know, he got the full atmosphere. So in the book, he says, you know, it was this kind of ominous feeling and yet same time inspiration, you know, very powerful place, Stonehenge, but it's now kind of lost because just this onslaught of tourists. Obviously, there's less of them with the uh or none probably with the covid business going on but um yeah normally it's you know coaches packed out pay to wander about there and things and uh yeah so it's gone so so in a sense when you anyone like me that's kind of very interested in the ancient mysteries you you seek out using ordnance survey maps these out of the way places that no one ever goes but anyway so that's it for now i just thought i would relate this kind of you know, serpent force story at Bronze Age burial mound. So I'm out of here and I'll see you later.